We want our kids to be safe. We want them to be able to focus on learning. You could see it on her t-shirt. Denver families calling for the entire DPS school board to resign after several incidents of violence this school year. How one board member is pushing back. Plus, a showdown over election security resumes in court today. The Denver company taking on Fox News, claiming it pushed the big lie for ratings. And ready to run the race of life, uh, the heartwarming <laughs> story behind this kiss and costume choice at yes. the end of the Boston Marathon mm -hmm. yesterday. Yeah. Certainly stuck out. Yeah. They, they did. <laughs> we don't know if they ran in the costumes or not. But That's yeah. right. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but mission accomplished for them. Thanks for joining us on this Tuesday. I'm Brian Sanders. And I'm Nicole Brady. Uh, Lisa, another nice day for a run here. Yeah, beautiful. This mm -hmm. morning we're in the 40s and 50s. It's going to get pretty toasty, though, early on. You're going to want to get uh, in that run early on. Right now, uh, 52 in Denver. A little bit of cloud cover out there. We're going to see a mix of sun and clouds here this morning, but a mild start at the bus stop. T-shirt and shorts weather again for your kids. Low to mid 70s here this afternoon, so even a little warmer than what we saw yesterday. We've got Denver at right around 75 by 5 o'clock. Low 70s near Castle Rock, more 50s and 60s up and through the mountains and foothills. Now, the change is that the winds are going to pick up, so with that, we do have some high fire danger. Fire weather warning goes into effect at 11 o'clock, in effect until 7 o'clock tonight, so wind gusts up to about 50 miles per hour, and you can see that fire danger covers all of eastern Colorado, so we'll take a closer look at that uh, Jason, these winds ahead of our next cold front, cooler tomorrow and a chance of showers. Details in just a few minutes. And we still have this major crash on I-25 at University. It's affecting both the north and southbound side of I-25. Now the wreck happened on the southbound side where this box truck slammed into the wall, sending concrete and other debris into the northbound side. Air Tracker 7, uh, just a moment ago over it. So this is the damage. That is the truck that slammed in the wall. That's actually wheels from the front of the truck. This is the top of the barrier that fell over right here into that shoulder area. They did have some debris here. They've cleaned it up, pushed it up. So the northbound lanes are open. One southbound lane remains closed down. So it's really helping out traffic on the northbound side from the drive time there. That's why I'm only looking about a half an hour's commute trying to get through there. The southbound side about a half an hour trying to come from uh, Colorado Boulevard all the way down to or down to Colorado Boulevard from Colfax. So some pretty heavy stop and go traffic. Side streets are a decent option for you right now. Well, after several shootings, families describe as a delay in the district's response. Denver parents are now calling for the entire DPS Board of Education to resign. I think in the, like, they're safe at school, but like, in the reality, they're not. I feel like the school board members, they don't care about the kids, you know. Denver 7's Brandon Richard joins us live from DPS headquarters this morning with the parents' demands and the response from the board. Well, Brian and Nicole, this is the first opportunity that many parents have had to address the entire DPS board since that March 22nd shooting at East High School, which injured two deans. And many of the people who spoke last night, many of those parents did not hold back, demanding that the entire board, the entire school board, all seven sitting members resign. Now, we caught up with some of those parents as well as some students ahead of the meeting as they were making signs to protest last night. They say because of dysfunction and behind the scenes bickering among board members and a lack of transparency, they have no confidence the board will be able to do what's necessary to keep students safe. The vice president of the board, Leontay Anderson, says hypothetically if everyone on the board were to resign, the governor would be tasked with appointing new members. But he says that's not going to happen. But that's not going to be a reality we'll face here in DPS. I plan to keep my job. I have not heard from any other of my colleagues that they plan to step down anytime soon. I think there's too much dysfunction and there's too much focus on that rather than what needs to be done. Hopefully we'll get to a point once our kids are feeling safe and the teachers feel safe, then we can focus on their education because that's what they're there for. And Anderson says that he's actually had more people thanking him for the job he's doing than asking him to resign. He's also tweeting out this message last night. He said, if you're going to ask the board to resign, at least make it look like you represent the majority of DPS students. Hint, DPS is 80% BIPOC. That's an acronym that stands for Black, Indigenous, and People of Color. Now, now last night, the superintendent also provided an update on this long-term school safety plan that he is 
putting together. He says the first version of that plan will be released on May 1st. The final version of the plan will be released sometime in June. And then, of course, it would be up to school board members to decide whether or not to approve that safety plan ahead of next school year. We're live at DPS headquarters in downtown this morning. Brandon Richard, Denver 7. All right. Thank you, Brandon. Well, it has been nearly a year since 22 year old Christian Glass died at the hands of Clear Creek County deputies. Criminal proceedings against the two deputies facing charges in his death will continue despite the defense's attempt to dismiss the case. On the day of the shooting, Glass had called for help after his car got stuck, but once law enforcement arrived, he refused to get out, saying he was afraid. As deputies tried to remove him from his car, Glass grabbed a knife and swung it at officers. That's when Andrew Bowen shot and killed Glass. He now faces second degree murder, reckless endangerment and official misconduct charges. Also, Kyle Gould faces negligent homicide and reckless endangerment charges for his role as a supervisor that night. Both deputies requested to have their indictment dismissed, but a judge threw out that request. They were back in the courtroom yesterday. Glass's parents were also there and said as difficult as it is to be there, they will continue to show up until justice is served. Our son lost his life. The least we can do as parents is come up and, and support him because I believe somehow he's still around. I can tell you how incredibly hard it is to see those murderers in court. It's, it's awful and we have nightmares about it, but we're, it's so hard, but we're here for our son. The next court date is set for June. Well, the Douglas County School District has settled a lawsuit filed by former Superintendent Corey Wise. $832,000 will pay out his contract and resolve claims of unlawful termination. I think it sends a statement. Uh, it's validating. Uh, it's validating that uh, uh, discriminatory, discriminatory acts, there's consequences. And Wise filed a lawsuit against the district and four board members after he was fired last year. He claimed it was over his support for masks in schools and for his advocacy of the district's equity policy. Wise says the settlement should send a message to every school district about the importance of keeping politics out of education. I think what we need to get back to is start getting uh, those parents and, and community members who are involved in the district to understand, to run for the right reasons, non-political, non-partisan, and to put students first. Corey Wise is now an assistant superintendent in the Cherry Creek School District. Time to talk about the Colorado Avalanche who begin their quest to bring the Stanley Cup home to Denver. Once again, we would love to see that scene of them hoisting the cup. Denver 7's Veronica Acosta is outside Ball Arena. A busy place this time of year. Fans are encouraged to come early and be loud. That's exactly it, Brian. Such an exciting time. We saw the Nuggets win just this past weekend, and now the Avalanche, they're going to start that playoff run. We know that later today, this area where I'm standing, it is going to look completely different. But before I tell you about that, the Avalanche are going to be taking on the Seattle Kraken. Might I add, a team that has never made it to the postseason. Meantime, the Avalanche do have three Stanley Cups under their belt. So let's talk about this area where we are this morning. Pretty quiet right now, but it's going to look completely different later on this afternoon. Take a look at this video. This is the area we call Avs Alley, or we started calling it that last season when the Avalanche won the Stanley Cup. It's going to be a big party atmosphere starting about 530. Booths, food, music, all of it right here about two hours before that puck drops. Now, when all of the fans march into the arena here behind me, they're going to find some white pom poms on their seats that they can use to get pumped up for game one. And I do also want to add for those of you who are watching the game from home or from somewhere else, just know you can buy those pom poms. They're $10 and then those $10 go to the Avs charity. Now the Avs hit the ice for practice yesterday. They finished the regular season number one in the Central Division for the third year in a row, and they are heavily favored over the Kraken tonight. Head coach Jared Bednard said the guys are ready. The whole season has been leading up to this very moment. A lot of prep, you put a lot of hard work as a group, as individuals into um, putting yourself in the best position to succeed come this time of the year, so there should be nerves. I mean, you, you guys have just basically gone to work for a year to try and get back to this spot, and I think if you, if you have nerves and you're excited about it and there's some jitters, it's a good thing. 
and you guys the puck drops at 8 p.m. tonight just for anyone out there who might be thinking they still want to maybe come to tonight's game we checked on Ticketmaster there are still some tickets available those go for around 100 bucks back to you yeah and a lot yeah. of watch parties in mm -hmm. the area around the arena for no charge thanks Veronica well right next door to ball arena is Elitch Gardens and a sign that summer is near the jobs available at Denver's amusement park ahead of opening weekend and a couple celebrating their marriage in a special way why they wanted to do it as unicorns and at the finish line of the Boston Marathon